Long ago, the people of the Caridian Desert lived peaceful and prosperous lives. But all of that changed when Amasket, the goddess of rebirth, was pushed to madness and began devouring the souls that she was meant to guide to rebirth. Deep within the desert, Amasket has discovered an ancient tomb housing weapons of untold power, and she is determined to harness these weapons to claim the divine essence of lesser deities. She believes that doing so will grant her the ability to achieve her ultimate goal of true godhood. Introducing Old School RuneScape's third ever raid, the Tombs of Amasket. Tombs of Amasket can be accessed in the southeastern tip of the Caridian Desert, and the completion of Beneath Cursed Sands is required to enter. Inside the pyramid, you'll find the Nexus, which consists of four main paths on the upper level and the final challenge awaiting adventurers on the lower level. There's the Path of Atmekin, the Path of Het, the Path of Scabarus, and the Path of Krondis. Each path begins with a challenge you'll have to complete to prove that you are worthy of facing the boss. The paths can be done in any order, but you must complete all four of them to unlock the final, mysterious door. We'll get to that later. Starting with the path of Abmechan, you must first make your way through Baba's minions, not only testing your strength, but proving your coordination as a team. It's not quite as easy as just defeating the minions, however, as special tools and techniques will be required to best this room. Worry not, however, because any tools you might need to complete a puzzle inside the Tombs of a Masket will be available inside of the raid, so no more worrying at the bank chest about lockpicks or axes. Once you defeat this challenge, you will then face the former matriarch, Baba. This fight will not only require fast footwork and reflexes, but will also test the coordination of your team members. Step carefully, lest you join the pile of corpses within her chamber. Next, the path of Het. If you wish to gain entry into Akka's chambers, you must pass his devious light puzzle. Oh wait, that's, uh, that's the wrong light puzzle. Sorry about that. His devious light puzzle. Think quickly and act surely, as this challenge will certainly be a test of wits. After the light puzzle comes Akka himself, a human warrior who attempted to sacrifice himself to a masket. Ultimately, the poison that he used failed, and he is now trapped on the brink of death. In this room, players will need to be quick on their protection prayers and gear switches, and must be ready to react to a whole host of lightning-fast attacks. This room will require your utmost attention, so buckle up. Then comes the path of Scabarus. In this path, there are two separate routes of three puzzles each, and all of them must be completed if you wish to gain access to Kefri's chamber. Players will have to use their brains and exhibit patience with their teammates to stay cool and push through. After these puzzles are complete, you will head into the room of Kefri in Ancient Scarab. Kefri once desired offspring to continue her race, which led Amasket to promise her children who would be even smarter than she was. However, Amasket twisted these words and turned her into a mindless thrall to act out her bidding. Kefri's room is fast-paced and will require quick reflexes and clear communication to ensure your group is not overwhelmed by the swarm. So play together and trust your instincts. Finally, we have the Path of Krondis. Krondis is the god of resourcefulness, and yours will certainly be challenged in these rooms. You must be light on your feet, as there will be devious tricks and traps blocking your way forward. Once you have accomplished this task, you will then face Zabak. Zabak was a weak but cunning crocodile that tricked his kin into traps so that he could devour them. Ultimately, the numbers of his kind ran thin, and his food ran out. Amasket promised him an endless supply of food if he were to serve her, upon which he agreed. This is another room requiring precise movement, synergy, and quick reflexes to help your team stay dry and avoid becoming that food yourselves. Now with the rooms out of the way, we can discuss how invocations and raid level work. The difficulty in Tombs of Amasket is decided by which invocations you choose to enable in your fights. Each invocation changes the raid in a certain way to make it more difficult and will also add to the raid level. There are more general invocations, such as limiting the number of lives, adding time limits, reducing the effectiveness of overhead prayers, or even blocking the use of food and potions inside the raid, just to name a few. Invocations can also affect specific paths, either by making certain mechanics more difficult or adding entirely new ones. The more difficult the invocation, the bigger the increase in raid level will be, 
With zero invocations active, the raid is considered entry mode, which is perfect for players who wish to enjoy the narrative and improve their skills. While there is still a very small chance of receiving all of the uniques in entry mode, the loot in general will be limited. At 150 raid level, the encounter is now considered normal mode, and you will be able to receive every piece of loot the Tombs of a Masket has to offer. Now for those who really want a challenge, the difficulty can be increased to raid level 300 for expert mode. Regular loot rolls will be more bountiful, and rare drops will be even more common at this difficulty. But beware, because for every point you increase the raid level, not only does the chance of a unique go up, but so does the HP and difficulty of each path. Now of course, what is a raid without loot? The rewards from Tombs of a Masket will be amazingly powerful and extremely useful both within the tombs and all throughout Gilinor. At beginner difficulty, only the following rewards will be available. First are the Curious Partisan Jewels. These are untradeable jewels used to upgrade the Curious Partisan with certain effects that can only be utilized within the raid itself. First we have the Eye of the Corrupter. This gives the Partisan a special attack called the Wrath of a Masket, which costs 75% of your special attack energy. This attack has 100% increased accuracy and 25% increased damage. The enemy hit by this will take 25% extra damage for the next 6 seconds, but the Partisan's attack speed will be twice as slow while using the special attack. Second is the Jewel of the Sun. This gives a passive effect to the Partisan that will drain prayer in exchange for HP. If you happen to deal a killing blow with this Partisan, you will lose 5 prayer points but gain 12 hit points, healing up to 20% over your maximum HP. This jewel also gives 25% increased accuracy for enemies under 25% HP, as well as granting a special attack, Tumakin's Light. This special attack costs 75% spec and 50 prayer points, but not only heals you for 120% of your total HP level, but also cures poison, restores drain stats, and fully restores run energy. The final jewel, the Breach of the Scarab, is the exception and can be used outside of the Tombs of a Masket. This jewel increases accuracy by 33% against Calphites, Scarabs, and Beetles. The next reward is the Thread of Elodinus. This reward is also untradeable and is a massive quality of life increase. The thread allows your rune pouch to carry four types of runes instead of the traditional three, and it can also be reverted to return your original pouch and the thread. The next two rewards can be achieved on entry mode, however they will require a few invocations to be obtainable. First is the Light Bearer. This is an ancient ring that when equipped doubles the special attack regeneration of the wearer. Players should get creative with this one as there are many opportunities to make this useful. Also, we have Osmumpton's Fang, a new 5-tick melee weapon that excels against monsters with high defense and can even be used against the corporeal beast without suffering a damage penalty like most other weapons. This is the end of the line for entry mode, however, as the rest of the loot will require normal mode or higher to be realistically obtainable. Starting with the long-awaited Masori. The new best in slot range armor taken from ancient Masori warriors who were powerful archers that battled in the Caridian War. Masori can be imbued with broken down armadillo plates and 90 crafting to create the upgraded set. We also have the Ward of Elodinus. This is an ancient broken shield that can be combined with an arcane sigil to become a powerful mage offhand. Sorry, Iron Man. Now finally, Chambers of Zarek has the Twisted Bow. Theater of Blood has the Scythe of Vitur. Rounding out the absolute powerhouses of the combat triangle is the Shadow of Tumakin. An ancient staff created by the god of light Tumakin and powered by the sun itself, the shadow is a commandingly powerful two-handed magic staff with a five-tick attack cycle, just like its brethren, the Tebow and the Scythe. This will be charged with soul runes and chaos runes and can be used to devastating effect. The first adventurers to claim this staff will surely be rewarded handsomely. Now that we have discussed the runes, the invocations, and the loot, it's time to return to something we haven't covered, the final boss. Once you have finished all four paths in the next door to the final challenge will open. Once inside, you'll be faced 